Hey class, how's it going? It's uh, time for chapter 3.6. Hope you had a good week so far of off. Um, I'm just checking in. Hopefully you're checking all your classes. You are checking your Google Classrooms. You're checking your email. <coughs> Today, we're moving on to 3.6 after a great lesson in three variable systems. Now we're going to solve systems using matrices. So we're still solving systems. This whole chapter is about solving systems. <coughs> and I like to relate this to solving problems in real life. You're just solving a problem. And that's what life is about. Life is not easy. We know that. Life's not easy at all. It's about solving problems in real life. And every day, as an adult, you solve a problem. You don't choose to solve these problems, but you do because you're an adult. As a child, or maybe you as a student, you have the option of not solving the problem and just not doing it and avoiding it. And that's the difference between an adult and a child. So today we're solving problems. We're going to use matrices. I'll be the first person to tell you now, matrices in this whole lesson is not necessary. But it's fun. It's interesting to look at and just to see how another way you could solve the problem. So I'm going to introduce it. Go over it all, tell you how to do it. And then tomorrow we're going to do one or two problems in our homework, and that's all you're going to do. Um, this will be on the test, and it'll be a quiz tomorrow too, um, just on how to solve it. But you don't have to solve one on the quiz, just like yesterday. So um, let's get going with matrices. The matrices are really cool. I mean, there's a movie made, I don't know, 20 years ago probably, called The Matrix. Um and this is a lot like that movie, actually. This is an alternate universe. And crazy, crazy way to think about life. And this is how I think about math. There's another way to think about this. Kind of like an alternate universe or a parallel universe movie or TV show recently called Stranger Things. Same idea. A little parallel universe going on there. Okay, vocabulary. Review. Underline the correct word to complete the sentence. The partial solution of the system of equations at the right uses... Substitution, elimination, or equivalent systems. Well, here you can see that they are eliminating something. What are they eliminating? The Z's. So when you eliminate something, it's called the elimination system. And that's a great quiz question um, that we could have on our quiz tomorrow. Vocabulary builder, definition. The RREF, which is a crazy, not really vocabulary because... It's an acronym, the RREF, or Reduced Row Echelon Form, which is a lot of big words for no reason. Function on a calculator generates a matrix that represents the solution of a system's equations. And this is possible if you have the right calculator, graphing calculator, which you guys do not need. But this is also possible if you use your computer. You can use something called Google, right? When you go to Google, which everyone knows, you go to something called Symbolab. Oops, I almost misspelled it there. And they have one of these too. And you can also Google um, Symbolab. That's a great math uh, equation solver website. A lot of teachers don't want you to know this, uh, but I like to make sure you know what it is. So you can use it and correct your work. There's also, you can just Google, right? Um, a matrix or a matrix solver, something like that. And you'll find a good one. And you can just put these numbers in and it'll solve it for you. Anyway, here's an example of a matrix, and it's pretty sweet looking. You have a 1, 0, 0, and a line is 5. This line is the equal sign always. So you have 1, So and this is a, you can see up here, right? X plus Y plus Z equals the answer. So all these are the same format. But you have to make sure they're lined up in the same format. X plus Y plus Z equals the answer. So this is an X, one X. This is zero Y, zero Zs. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Pretty cool. And this is an easy one because there's lots of zeros and some ones. Um, is a matrix in reduce row echelon form representing five, negative eight, and four. And so here's the five, negative eight, and four. That's what it's the representative solution. So let's go through what all this means. Use your vocabulary. Draw a line from each 
RREF matrix in column A to the solution it represents in column B. So here we go. We have 203 right here. So we're looking for 203, and it's right here. So we're going to draw a line. It's all we got to do. Not that hard, right? Not that hard at all. Then we have 0, 2, 3. There we go. Draw a line to the 0, 2, 3 right there. 2, 3, 0. Right there it is. So what it's saying is this is the X. This is the Y. This is the Z. Right? So this must be the X, the Y, and the Z. So that's what we're saying right now. That's RREF. Next page. We're flying through this today. Identifying a matrix element. Okay, problem number one. Got it? What is element A13 in matrix A? So we're trying to figure out what that is. What is A13? What is A13? So let's figure out how to do this. And we'll figure out what A13 means. And what does A mean in this little subscript right here, 13? Okay. Underline the correct words to complete the sentence. The matrix has three rows. I'm supposed to underline them, my bad. And four columns. Remember, rows go across like this, right? And a column, I remember this word just because I was a history major a long, long time ago. In ancient Greece, a column looked like this, right? Something like that. And they were in buildings in ancient Greece. So column, columns go up and down. So they go up and down like that. And rows go across. And rows, I kind of think about seats. You know, you have seats of a baseball stadium or a theater or something like that. They go across. So that's how it works. The element A13 is in row what and column what? So we're going to say row 1, column, 13, column 3. So 1, 3 is going to look like this. So what is A13? Well, A13 is actually subscript. This is going to be row 1, column 3. So this first thing is going to be the row, and the second thing is going to be the column. So that's how it works. So if I said, you know, 2, 2, it's going to be right here. You know, 3 right there. So that's how it works. Let's move on. Problem two, representing systems with matrices. Got it? How can you represent the system of equations at the right with a matrix? So this is pretty simple. All matrix does, guys, is you get rid of all the variables. That's all you're going to do. All these letters are variables, so we're going to get rid of the letters. No letters allowed. Kind of like a no smoking sign. Boom. No letters allowed. So here what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. How many rows and columns will the matrix have? Well, we have two rows. Columns. One, two, three. All right. Write the matrix. So we're just going to write what we see here, right, without the letters. So the first one, make sure you do the negative sign. That's one thing people forget. Negative four, negative two, and seven, right? This little line here, remember I said was equal sign. So that little line discriminates between the, and that, you can find that on a computer too. This is on the computer. You can put a little line in there. I believe it's um, right underneath the backspace. So the next, the next row is three, and then we have a Y by itself. When you have a Y by itself or any letter by itself, it means one, right? You don't have to put that one, but um, you have to put it in this situation, but you don't have to put it next to the letter, the variable. And then you have negative five. So there's problem two. We just solved how to take an equation and put it into a matrix. Pretty cool. Writing a system from a matrix. Problem three. This is We're flying by this. Like I said, you don't need to know this information, but this is cool to understand and very easy to understand once you figure out how to put the numbers in the right place. What linear system does 2, 0, 6, 5, negative 2, 1 represent? So now we're going to do the opposite. Before we took them out, now we're going to put them back in. Here's a matrix. And remember, we have just two columns here before the equal sign. 
So we have an X plus a Y equals, right, a number. X plus a Y equals a number. Underline the correct numbers to complete the sentence. The matrix represents a system of two equations, right? There's two equations here. One, two. And how many variables? Just two variables because there's two columns before the equal sign. So complete the system of equations. Like I said before, there's only an X and a Y, no Z. So you can put these numbers right here into the matrix. It's very simple. Two. There's a zero here. So you put that zero right into the matrix. And then it equals a six. Here's that six. Next line, very simple. Five, negative two, and a one. That's all you do. Very simple. Now we're flying. Flying, flying, flying. All right, next page, 80. Key concept, row operations. Use the row operation indicated to complete each matrix. So you can visualize real quick by the last problem. Let's go back. What our quiz is going to be like tomorrow. Our quiz, I'm going to ask a question 100% from this. 100%. Might be the same question, actually. Hint, 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 hint. Key concept, row operations. Use the row operation indicated to complete each matrix. So switch any two rows, switch rows one and two. Okay, here we go. So four, five, three becomes, right? Four, five, three on top becomes three, two, six, right? Because there's a three, two, six. This is going to go on top. This one's going to go on bottom. It's not that hard. You're just going to switch them. Can you do that? Yes, you can. If it's easier to subtract or add, you're going to have to do that. Multiply a row by a constant. Can you multiply a row by a constant? Yes. As long as you multiply anything by a constant in this, the entire row, you're allowed to do that math. You can multiply any equation by a number, and it is this exact same equation. We didn't change it at all. Kind of funny, I know. We talked about this before in seventh grade, um, all the way through 11th grade, and this year, too. So we multiply by two and three. So the top one, we have four, five, right, and three. And it becomes, right, multiplying everything. Here's the three right there, by the way. Multiplying everything by three, you have three times three, which is, we're just going to put that there now. Then we have three times two and three times six. So now we're going to put our answers over here. Original one is four, five, and three. And then everything by each other, three times three is nine. 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 6, 18. And then add one row to another. Now, you can add these rows, right? So add 2, row 2, to row 1. Why can you add them? Because you want to get rid of things sometimes, right? We talked about these four. Elimination method, subtracting also. So we have 4 plus 3 plus 5 plus 2, 3 plus 6. Right? And then we have the next row is 3, 2, 6 right down here. That row does not change at all. But the top row, you can see you are, right? Like this, we should almost circle these. These are different. This is a problem. And this is kind of confusing here. And this is a problem. And this is a problem. So the bottom one's same to same. You can see 3, 2, 6. The top one, you're added this 3, 2, 6 to the top. So you have 4 plus the bottom of three, we're gonna put the answer over here as seven. The next one, five plus two is also seven. The next row, three plus six is nine. And then the bottom row doesn't change at all. It's three, two, six. You can combine any of these steps to solve a system using a matrix. So you can use any of those steps to solve a matrix. This is why this is key concept. So you can switch any two rows. You can multiply a row by a constant, which we do all the time in two and three step variable ones. And you can add a row to another, which we also do. So these are pretty similar to what we've learned before. A lot of times, if you think differently, these matrices and matrices are good um, to maybe if you learn differently. And that's why everyone teaches them in the building. Um, 
because maybe your mind works differently. You're more of a hands-on person. You can see this a lot different. So the system is saw below. Write a justification for each step. And this looks crazy, but it's not that bad. Let's dissect this very slowly. We have nine here, nine there. Negative two, negative two, five, five, three, seven, and 17. Boom, boom, boom. We just took that and put it over here into this matrix right here. And now we are going to try to solve this matrix. In order to solve it, right, you need to have something to eliminate. So we're trying to use the elimination method. In, a, in order to do the elimination method, you need two of these to line up. And the easiest one to do is multiply the second row by negative three, right? Because you get the second row to be negative three times three is nine. You can eliminate the first variable, which is X that way. So that's why they're eliminating something right away. So we're gonna eliminate the entire row. Multiply row two by negative three. Add two rows, then we're gonna add the rows together. Add to row one. After that, we're gonna to add to row one to eliminate something. So that's why that is happening right there. We, we first multiplied here, right, with the parentheses, and then we added them together. So they didn't really show the adding, but they replaced row two by the sum. And this is almost the geometry with the proofing part. And I hate geometry proofs myself. Um, and I do not almost like this here, how you have to justify your answer. Um, and so I think we, we could almost just skip over this, but we're just going to do it for the sake of doing it today. Uh, next one, multiply a row two by one over 23. Um, and again, this is, um, we're just going to write this down. Negative one over 23. And why are you doing this? And we'll see this real quick is you have zero, your answer from the first part, zero, negative 23 and negative 46. And so if you multiply this by negative one over 23, so we put it in here. So we have these two right here became this one, right? Um, in order to solve it better, you need to, take this 23, right, and make that into a smaller number. So we have to multiply negative 1 over 23, which that times 0 is 0. That times this is reciprocal is always 1. And then this by this is 2. So I know this is really abstract for you guys right now. This is getting the, the geometry abstraction, which is very difficult to comprehend, especially if I'm not there with you, but we'll just keep on continuing. Multiply row two by two, right? Add to row one. So here's this problem right here. They multiply it by two right here um, because they need to get rid of something else. And it got rid of right here. You can see they got rid of that. The two times one is two, negative two plus two is zero. Then you replace row by the sum. Replace row one by the sum. Next step. We'll multiply row one by one ninth. Why one ninth? Because you have two niners here. Get rid of those niners. So multiply row one by one over nine. And then the last step, you have one zero one, right? You replace replace row one. And you have zero, one, two. So circle the solution of the system. And this is a crazy way to do this. I don't really um, agree with 100% with this up here, but I wanted to show it to you just to see how many steps there are to solve these problems. And there's a lot easier ways we'll do in the future. The solution to the system is right here. So you can see that right 
there with the one on top here and the two on the bottom. All right, next step. Problem five, using a calculator to solve a linear system. And the biggest part of this right here, I'm going to skip over most of this. We're not going to do this part right here or here or here. Biggest thing I want to show you here is how to insert this equation down here. So first, oh, I'm sorry. Circle the matrix that models the system. I didn't circle the right one probably. It's actually, the, it's actually this one right here. I will circle this one. This one's not correct. This one's not correct. I'm going to show you how to insert that. So you have 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 21 here. And here's a 1, 4, 6, 21. This row has 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2, 1C, 1, 4, 4. The next row, negative 8, right? And look at here. This is the tricky part. There is no A. So there's no A here. We have a B and a C. You have to put zero for A. And that's a tricky one. All of a sudden, they just threw that gamut in there real quick. You have negative A in there. Negative 8, I mean. You have a 1C, and you have a negative 1. So this is definitely the answer. I just want to make sure you know how to take the systems for this whole lesson and put it into a matrix. That's the only goal I want you guys to be able to do, like I said before. And the RREF of the calculator is going to be 1, 1 half, and 3. Just letting you know. So we're going to skip this part. Do the lesson check. Math success. Do you understand? And you guys should be able to do this. This will be on your quiz. 100% quiz tomorrow right here. This will be the quiz. Look, there's actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 questions. Um, so, and it's really, really easy if you read the first part with me. If you didn't, go review that real quick. But these will be your questions on your quiz for 3.6, which will be Thursday. If you have any questions, please email me today. Um, I'm available all day. I can Google Meet you all day. You know that. So have a great day. Hopefully you're checking your stuff, like I said before. And we will be back in school next week. Miss you guys.